Let's go! Durante Jones. Who is this guy? Well, he could be your next defensive coordinator for LSU. I'm going to tell you what I like. I'm going to tell you what I don't like. At the time of this recording, he is currently being interviewed by LSU. Also, you should be very excited that Tom Brady won. And also, oh yeah, we're going to look at some recruiting. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we got to get to 4,000 subscribers. Let's go. So we're going through this quick, baby. First thing, most important thing. Look at this line from Durante. God dog Jalen Rose, watch out. The sharpest of sharpest lines no longer belongs to you. So his coaching experience is pretty interesting as we go through his pretty extensive career. Let's start with the early stuff. Bachelor's degree after four years of playing defensive back at Morgan State University. Started his career immediately as a graduate assistant at Lenore Rhine University in North Carolina. We have a lot of viewers in the Carolinas. Anyway, he moves on to Nichols State in 2002. Defensive coordinator at two different Louisiana high schools in 03 and 04. Then... Bowie State University, where he was a co-defense coordinator, 05 to 09. And here's a really good piece from the Star Tribune. And in just a moment, I'm going to tell you how I think Durante Jones's name got into the search. And no, it's not because he spent a year under Dave Veranda. Okay, it's actually someone else on LSU's coaching staff. So this is pretty well written from Ben Gosling. Went from Los Angeles to Montreal, where he spent a little time in the CFL, then to Hawaii, then to Madison, Wisconsin. You guys know I love looking at a coach's journey. I mean, you really have to sacrifice and go from place to place to place. Well, this is where it gets interesting when you start getting into his NFL career. Spent a few years with the Miami Dolphins and then went to the Cincinnati Bengals and then went to the Minnesota Vikings. And obviously, in just a moment, we're going to take a look at his history with those teams. How did his name get into the coaching search? And you read his Louisiana coaching mentors. While he was the defensive coordinator at those high schools, he picked up, obviously, a lot of connections, as well as when he was with Nichols State. Lionel Vital, Cowboy Scouting Director, Vance Joseph, the Cardinals defensive coordinator, and Vance Joseph's brother is Mickey Joseph. I actually didn't know that before today, which is really cool. So Mickey Joseph, obviously the talented LSU receivers coach, is a mentor to Durante Jones. To what extent are they friends and whatnot, I don't know, but that's another connection and... It has been reported that LSU has had Durante Jones on their coaching uh, hot list for quite some time now. Is that true? I, I would like to think so because obviously Durante's resume is pretty daggum interesting. How was Durante Jones as an actual coach? Because all these nice things can be said about him. Well... Let's actually look at the stats. So in his first season, PFF did not like what they saw from the Minnesota Vikings secondary, ranking them 23rd. But first, who is his actual personnel? Take a look at this. Xavier Rhodes, Trey Waynes, and Mackenzie Alexander all signed elsewhere. And Pro Football Focus also included this. Rookies Cameron Dantzler and Jeff Gladney were thrown right into the fire. By the way, in a division with Matthew Stafford and, uh, that what's that guy's name? The guy who wouldn't run into the end zone when it was wide? Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, okay? Once again, we'll get to why it's actually a good thing Tom Brady won. Anyway, um, yeah, it, it's rough in this division with two sharp passers like Stafford and Rodgers. Here is a passing chart from Sharp Football Stats showing everywhere uh, where teams had success and not so much success. And as you can see here, the green 
in this situation is not good. Um, only time second down, deep middle, third down, shallow crossing routes, which makes sense because Harrison Smith does a really good safety. But outside of Harrison Smith, Durante just did not have a lot to work with. As you can see here, you look at passing yards per attempt, Minnesota was 30th. When Durante Jones was at Cincinnati, 31st, tied for last, 7.4 yards per attempt. So his last two years in the secondary haven't been so good, but I'm going to defend him for that because take a look at who his secondary was. Sean Williams and Jesse Bates the third. Now, if you can tell me where Sean Williams or Jesse Bates the third went to college, I will give you an ice cream sundae. But is Durante actually a good fit? Well, I'm going to give you my honest opinion on this. There's a lot of good and there's a lot of meh, which could actually be good. So obviously this hire will be made in the same vein as Ryan Nielsen, a young up-and-comer NFL sharpshooter who has never been the defensive coordinator at the Power 5 or NFL level. So you are taking a chance when you go with the Ryan Nielsen or Durante Jones. Number one, they're coming from the NFL down to college. Obviously two different landscapes there. Durante Jones obviously very familiar with Louisiana, but you know, you are moving. There's that aspect of it. And, well, part of the issue with never actually calling the plays is that a lot changes when you are between the headset. You are the person spearheading the entire operation when it comes to game planning. And while Ed Orgeron is a defensive background coach, well, he's not an X's and O's guy. So this would be the most responsibility Durante Jones has ever had in his career. However, I would feel a little bit better about this than Ryan Nielsen. Now look, Ryan Nielsen has unquestionably had better success in the NFL than Durante Jones, simply because the Saints defensive line has been amazing. But then again, you know, Ryan Nielsen has that Cam Jordan guy, and that helps out a lot, whereas Durante Jones just hasn't had a whole lot to work with in these past couple of years. Like Ryan Nielsen, I looked at all the behind-the-scenes videos where he's mic'd up and filmed, and he's very energetic, obviously very technical, very relatable with players. Now, obviously, that's just a YouTube clip. Maybe he's, you know, showcasing for the camera. I, that's always a situation with the coach. With that said, and, you know, this guy kills it, when it comes to connections, when it comes to interviewing, when it comes to knowledge of the game, a lot of these younger coaches are sharp. Now, I'm going to make an argue against those who are anti-defensive coordinator when it comes to experience. Because a lot of us fear hiring someone that has no experience. Jake Peets and DJ Mangus, no experience. But here is my counter when it comes especially to the defensive side of the ball. Well, LSU hired as experienced of a defensive coordinator as you could possibly find in our boy Bo Pelini, and he was awful. And, it, you know, maybe that's just Bo Pelini. I was, as many of you know, very critical of the hire when it happened. Uh, experience is kind of overrated because... The offenses in college football have radically changed so much where experience really doesn't mean as much as it used to be. Okay, you're experienced, but how much have you evolved? Also, if you're a defensive coordinator and there is some experience out there, guess what? There's also plenty of film of you out there. This would be a, a message that all defensive coordinators should probably take into consideration. You probably need to scrap the old ideas of defense, right? Stopping the run is no longer the most important thing. It is a very important thing, and it is something you should think about, obviously, when it comes to running a defense. But passing plays by every analytic out there 
is a more efficient way to score and move the football. So your first question should be, can we stop the pass, and then can we stop the run? Because you want the other team to run instead of pass because it is analytically a less efficient play. So getting a defensive backs coach who has gone from place to place to place, obviously very well connected, obviously very sharp, who's coming into this with a fresh perspective might actually be a good thing. Remember, LSU's got a talented defensive line room already with Ed Orgeron having that experience. He does a lot of the coaching for the defensive line anyway. Christian Lacatour is also in that room. You know, I wouldn't mind, and, and some people say, well, Corey Raymond is, is already there, and he's a great defensive backs coach, and you are right about that. But Corey Raymond also does a lot of recruiting. He is the recruiting coordinator for a reason. And yes, Durante Jones has the talent to move down to linebackers coach, but I wouldn't mind a defensive coordinator also being a defensive backs coach going alongside Corey Raymond and then hiring a linebackers coach. I think that would actually work itself out. I would be perfectly fine with that. That way it gives Corey Raymond more leeway and time to do what he does best which obviously is recruiting. Obviously, I'm on board with it. Not on fire for it because of all the unknowns, but I do think this would be a better hire than Bo freaking Pelini. Now, why should you be happy that Tom Brady got the job done? Well, it's because of the Tigers, baby. Let's go. LSU, most players in the Super Bowl... And that's because Tom Brady and the Buccaneers were able to get the job done thanks to Leonard Fournette, Kevin Minter, and Devin White. Something very interesting about Kevin Minter, I saw him yesterday on the broadcast. I think Kevin Minter also has a captaincy, unless I saw something wrong. So really happy for those guys and obviously three fan-favorite LSU players, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, Tyron Matthew, and Daryl Williams of the Kansas City Chiefs. So, it's very interesting. It's also the 20, uh, this is from Michael Bonnet, it's also the 20th consecutive year, tied with Georgia for the longest streak in the SEC, that LSU will be represented in the NFL's biggest game. And the streak of Super Bowl appearances actually started with Tom Brady in 2002, when Kevin Falk played in that game. So, six LSU Tigers, which leads the entire NFL. So as you can see here, as of right now, LSU nationally ranked number three, SEC ranked number one for the class of 2022. And this is after multiple decommitments from Sean Washington and Brian Allen. But this was the big one over the weekend. LaTerrence Welch out of the 337 Lafayette, Louisiana. By the way, shout out to Dustin Poirier, Pulling the upset over Conor McGregor. Dustin, I need some of that hot sauce, baby. So, LaTerrence Welch, Acadiana, that's really cool. Uh, Apparently, Louisiana is locked and loaded for uh, the defensive back position this year. LSU obviously has two other out-of-state defensive back commits in the top 150, and they also have a defensive back commitment for Marcus Scott, who's not even ranked so uh this is Corey Raymond doing his magic again this is a very loaded 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 class um a very talented state of Louisiana and I bring this up obviously Walker Howard you guys know how I feel about him I do think Walker Howard is a real deal Will Campbell though his announcement coming up in just a few days January 30th This is an in-state four-star offensive lineman. This looks to be a really good offensive line class in the state of Louisiana with Bo Borderline and a few other guys uh, in this class. Let's get down to uh, Emory Jones at a Catholic high. um, Has a heavy LSU lean right now. And Bo Borderline, obviously not a highly rated player, but out of Isidore Newman in New Orleans, 6'5", 250, Heavy LSU lean with him as well. Very interesting. This is going to be a loaded, loaded class for LSU. 
in Adjikati here, an Etienne out of Jennings, Louisiana. I would be very shocked if he doesn't end up going to Clemson, but we, yeah, I mean, you never know in recruiting. You honestly never, never know. So uh, a few big weeks coming up for the 2022 class and the 2021 class. Obviously, you could see here 2021 LSU recruiting nationally ranked number five, SEC ranked number three. That's probably going to stay the same no matter what happens over the next few weeks. And you guys know all about this class already. But I want to get down to the commitments because we're still waiting to see if Savian Jones is going to sign. I would be shocked if he didn't. And then Chemo, I would be shocked if he didn't sign, which leaves LSU with three open slots left. Jordan Moko's the name out there. What about Brian Thomas Jr.? Will the lanky six foot four receiver out of Walker sign with LSU? Well, we don't know. So those slots are going to be very interesting. What about Rajon Davis? Is that out of the question? I would think so, but you honestly never know in recruiting. So be on the lookout. We're going to have more recruiting content heading your way. Boom! Ugh. I, I, it's always uh, I'm always a nervous wreck when it comes to coaching search hires. But anyway, it is power, our LSU. Boom! Oh, man. Whew. I think I got some salmon in there for lunch. It's raining, though. It's raining. 